This African ghost drum is supposed to keep ghosts away when you play it. It, um, doesn't. I got this one a few months ago. It's doing pretty well. I can't remember the last time I cooked with those. It's getting to the point where I should put the Chinese takeout place on speed dial. You never know when you'll need a cup of instant. Out of sight, out of mind. I can't remember the last time I cooked with that. It's getting to the point where I should... I'll relax later. Joey used to screw with my reception, so I finally got 70 bucks a month. I sold most of my books after getting my phone. This thing is perfect for reading on the subway. I used to stare into that thing for hours. Still do sometimes. It was here when I moved in. It's probably older than I am. My end table, full of random junk. It's just trash. Just some old articles, bills, and reminders. Nothing important. It's broken, but it looks good on the wall. Since I got my phone, I only use this for writing. I haven't changed the month in ages. The article is titled, The Rise and Fall of the Meltzer Foundation. I didn't write it, but I did kind of make it happen. This building doesn't have a doorman anymore, so they put in these buzzers. It's a poster for a movie called Water Under the Bridge. It's the last article I ever wrote for the Village Eye newspaper. It was about three college kids who committed suicide. It's open. Come on in. I'll be out in a sec. Is this how high-rolling reporters live nowadays? Hmm? Sorry, Sorry about, about that. that. I haven't been feeling well, as I said. Who's your friend? Is something wrong? Jeremy? Are you dead? I certainly feel sick enough to be dead. I haven't been able to leave the apartment in two days. I just, I just caught a nasty bug or something. Horrible timing. I'm on the verge of something really big. That's why I need your help. You need our help, all right. Sorry, but who are you? I'm with her. This is Joey. He's kind of my... partner. I see. So you two are... Don't oh, know. Uh, nothing like that. I mean, a writing partner. Oh, good. I mean, I mean, that's, that's good. good. Partners, Partners are good. good. Well, well, it's, it's nice, nice to meet you, Joey. Joey. I, like I like the hat. The hat. Anyway, anyway, how about, how about we get, get down to business? business? Are you sure there's nothing else wrong with you? It's, it's just the flu. flu. Nothing, nothing to, to worry, worry about. about. I'll be fine in a few days. I just, I just want, want to get this article submitted before it's too late. late. All right, Jeremy, tell me about this article of yours. Brilliant. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Do you know where the City Post news office is? I think so. This flu is making it hard to remember everything, but I kept pretty good notes. Just go up there and tell them I sent you. My notebook is on my desk. I go myself, but... I'm not exactly up to snuff. Snuff is the word. Joey! What? So what do you say? Will you help me? Yes, of course I'll help. It's what I do. Well, I better get going. Thanks. I really appreciate this, Rosangela. Yeah, look, you can call me Rosa. All right. Rosa it is, then. Jeremy's desk is neat as a pen. He always was a bit of a neat freak. Those look like articles Jeremy wrote for the City Post. None from the village I, though. Can't say I blame him. 
the hustle and bustle of 23rd Street. A bit noisy, but it's nice to look at. Lots of nonfiction and books by journalists. It's been a few years since I saw him. He looks exactly the same. I guess he always will now. Oh my god. Is that me? I mean, us? Yeah. You remember the 05 Christmas party? Yeah, that was a while ago. I was going through some old pictures when I came across yours. That's why I thought to call- I see. This was really five years ago? I barely remember it. It's Jeremy, back when he was alive. I don't even remember getting this picture taken. Ugh, what a horrible picture of me. I never knew Jeremy was so religious. Oh, I'm not. Not really. It belonged to my grandmother. Hey, look. Before you go, I just want to, well, apologize. I know it's a bit weird calling you up and asking you such a big favor like this. Don't worry about it. Well, when I'm over this flu, I'll make it up to you. I promise. No, you don't have to do that. Really. Just... Just take care of yourself. Well, that was unexpected. Yeah, I suppose. You know where that newspaper office is? Yeah. Then let's hop to it. Hmm? Could I help you? What do you know about Jeremy Sams? Jeremy? He works here. His office is just up there on the second floor, but I haven't seen him in a few days. So you don't know where he is now? I have no idea. If you'd like to leave him a message, I'll let him know you stopped by. I was told you'd be expecting me. My name is Rosangela Blackwell. Sorry, I wasn't told anything. Really? I need to go inside and pick up some notes. Sorry, but if you don't have permission to be here, I can't let you in. Do you know anything about Jeremy's death? Huh? Jeremy's death. I'm kind of looking into it. Jeremy's dead? Are you serious? You mean you don't know? Of course not. What happened to him? I'm not sure. What do you mean you're not sure? How did he die? What happened? I don't know. Where is he now? I don't know. Right. This is sick. I think you should get out of here before I call security. That's my girl, making friends wherever she goes. I'll be going, I guess. Bye. She looks tired. Looks like a standard switchboard phone to me. The City Post. I'm guessing that's where Jeremy's desk is. I can't see much from down here, but I think it says Junior Reporters. I'm guessing that's where Jeremy's desk is. She keeps looking around the room and sighing. Jealousy, maybe? Is it normal for such a young woman to be working this late? Hmm, huh, she must need the money. Just a desk phone. Well, if I didn't know where we were before, I certainly do now. It says Junior Reporters. That must be where Jeremy's desk is. Snazzy. I guess that kind of thing impresses some people. An office cubicle, empty. It's one of them computer things. It's the notebook that Jeremy asked us to find. It's closed right now. I can't read what's inside. It's one of them computer things. Looks like a press pass. I can't make heads or tails out of what this says.
Oh, no. It's pretty quiet out there tonight. Good. I don't want someone looking up here and seeing me talk to myself. He looks pretty grim. I wonder what he's doing here. Jeremy, I'm so sorry. Excuse me, officer? It's Detective. Detective Durkin. And you shouldn't be up here at this hour. Did something happen here? No, I'm doing street art. Of course something happened. You should run along home. You don't want the same thing to happen to you. Someone died, didn't they? Gee, what tipped you off? Believe me when I say you don't want to be involved. Could you tell me who it was? Couldn't, even if I wanted to, because we don't know. So it's, uh, what do you call it, a uh, John Doe? Yeah, sure, whatever. I think I know who the victim was. You do, huh? His name was Jeremy Sams. And how do you know this? I just do. You just do. Ish. What is it about Pox that brings out all the crazies? I'm positive the victim is Jeremy. Maybe I can ID the body. You want to come look at the body? You know how crazy you sound? I do. You come out of nowhere and say you know a stiff by looking at an outline on pavement? Yeah, sounds crazy. Even if you could ID the guy, it wouldn't hold up. I'm offering information here. Why won't you take it? You think you're the only crackpot with a theory? We have procedures. We'll release a photograph and then get a proper ID. Now run along. Right. I'll it's a free car. Come on in. Oh, hi, Rosa. Make yourself at home. Jeremy, could I have this photo? Really? You want it? If it's okay. Sure. I've got copies somewhere. Go right ahead. Thanks. Is this the same man you found? Let me see that. That's him, all right. What did you say his name was? Jeremy Sams. Jeremy Sams. And what's your relation to him? We used to work together. Hmm. You know any of his family? Anyone we can notify or speak to? I know he was a reporter for the City Post. Right. I'll give him a call. And we're gonna have to follow up with you, too. You got a number? Here's my card. Spiritual services, huh? Why do I always end up with the nuts? Anyway, right. Good night. Don't stay up here too long. It ain't safe. Um, you're welcome? Oh, it's you. I just got off the phone with the police. You were right. Jeremy is really dead. I just saw him two days ago. He was always nice to me. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. About before, I was a complete jerk. Why didn't you say it was murder? I wasn't sure at the time. Police seemed pretty sure. You said you were investigating his death? Yes. I wanted to take a look at his desk. Right. I'll buzz you in. The place is empty. I'm just here holding the phones. Take as much time as you need. Just find whoever did this, okay? I'll do my best. All right, Jeremy. What were you up to? Let's see if it was worth getting killed over. According to this, Jeremy interviewed a woman named Penelope Haynes. Looks like Jeremy tried to speak to someone named Penelope Haynes over the phone. 
Looks like Jeremy tried to... A definite connection. Connection to what? It says that Jeremy followed up with someone and whoever it was tried to scam him. It says that Jeremy followed up with... Jeremy lost his phone somewhere. I wonder if anyone found it. Come on in. Oh, hi Rosa. Make yourself at home. Jeremy? Yes? I got your notebook. You are a rock star. Here you go. Take it. Right. On second thought, could you read it out to me? This flu is making me a bit fuzzy. I'm having trouble focusing my eyes. Are you sure? Yes, yes. Please. please. Sure, Jeremy. Thank you. You wrote about someone named Penelope Haynes. Penelope Haynes, yeah. She's an interesting case. She's a victim, but doesn't believe she's a victim at all. She embraces it. I wish it was uncommon, but unfortunately it's not. What do you mean? God, my head. It's like thinking through a straw. Penelope. She's the weak link. She's a talker. Most people don't like to talk about this kind of thing, but she does. Talk about what? It's hard to explain. Why don't you try us? No. I'm just really sick, okay? I can't think straight. Of course, you're sick. I understand. Thank you. But I do need more to go on. Speak to Penelope. She lives up on Park Avenue. She's a bit old, so be patient with her. You wrote in your notes that you lost your phone. Did I? Yes, you did. If I did, I must have found it. I've got it right here. See? Well, I better get going. All right. Thanks again. Yes? Penelope Haynes? I'm Madison Haynes. Penelope is my mother-in-law. Can I help you? She had a visit from a reporter not too long ago. A Jeremy Sams from the City Post. Oh, you're with them. Come in. <laughs> Sorry, but you're out of luck. She no longer lives here. Where did she go? Where she can be taken care of. She's quite elderly. A nice enough woman, but needed a lot of looking after. As you can see, we just had a child. I couldn't look after both of them. Not if I wanted to keep my sanity. So she's in a nursing home? An assisted living center, yes. Could you tell me what center she's in? I don't think that's a good idea. When your friend from the newspaper came, she became quite agitated. She was always a little unstable, but she became much worse. I don't know what you want with her, but I don't think I should tell you where she is. What did Jeremy speak to Penelope about? You don't know? Aren't you from the paper too? Not exactly. Jeremy is, uh, ill. I'm following up on his interviews, trying to learn what he did. I see. Well, I don't know what they spoke about. He spoke to her privately in her room just over there. That's a cute kid you've got there. Thanks. His name is Chris. He's about eight months old now. He's a little terror, but <laughs> he's mine. Well, thanks for the chat. I might be back to follow up. I don't really have anything else to tell you, but bye. <laughs> Looks like a thermostat. The bedroom door. I've always wondered what kind of people collected these things. I wouldn't kick her out of bed, but only if she lost the attitude. He's staring right at me. 
Kids that young have always been able to see ghosts like me. They never get scared, though. I guess they don't know any better. Glossy women's magazines and tabloid junk. Looks like a phone to me. Looks like it leads to the rest of the apartment. Looks like they forgot to turn the lights off in here. It's the way out of here. Looks like an old closet to me. Just a set of drawers. It's a brochure. It looks like it's for a nursing home. The place is called Seagram Assisted Living, and it's got a branch down on East 33rd. Pretty generic stuff. They sell this crap by the hundreds in any department store. Look at the dust on that thing. Nobody's slept here for a while. Some kind of green trinket. Not bad. Hey, lady. Nope, she can't hear me. So, kid, how's it going? Oh, no need to get up. Oh, hey, watch it! <sighs> I swear, Chris, you've got a skull tougher than your father's. There's a reason why I keep my hands in my pockets. There's less disappointment that way. I found out where they stashed the old lady. It's a place called Seagram. Did you get the address? Of course I did. 